Good morning to each one and welcome. It's good to see the house filling up and I think there's uh, quite a few more that are waiting to come in. So we'll just sing a chorus for opening and then prayer and then we'll have Marcus lead us in our opening songs and then I will come back up and we will um, I'll give the order of the service. So thank you each one for coming. Let's stand. <clears throat> I had a real weird happening yesterday. I'm not going to go into the story with my throat, so I'll try to lead a chorus. This is the day, but just jump in quick because my voice wants to break and everything. But This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice, we will rejoice and be glad in and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day Father in heaven, we are very grateful to you for your many blessings. Lord, you've given us a beautiful morning. And Lord, it's exciting to see everyone that is here. Some people who haven't seen for a while, and we're glad that you've brought each one. Father, I pray that you would be lifted up in this service. You would be exalted in all that we do. We just pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> Good morning. In your hymns of the church, let's begin with number 43. Number 43. This is not the same tune, but some of the same words. This is the day the Lord hath made. Mm, this is the day the Lord hath made. He calls the is old. Let him rejoice, let earth be glad, and praise around the throne. Today he loves and left the dead, and Satan's empire fell. To The city of light, mid the stars, we are told, where they know not a sorrow or care, and the gates are of gold, and the streets are of gold, and the building exceedingly fair. Let us pray for. Good 
During that time, we'll take the uh, regular offering. This will be for our local people. Um, we'll take the regular offering um, during the time of announcements. And after that, we'll have just a short sharing time. And then we'll turn the time over to Faith Mission Home for the remainder of the service. If you would allow us to do the closing at the end, that would um, work out for us. Um, we'd like to lift an offering for Faith Mission Home. And we... Do have a fellowship dinner plan, and so everyone can plan on staying here. Um, we will ask God to bless the food, and I'm sure we'll have enough to go around. So you can plan on staying. <clears throat> Turn with me to Acts chapter three. chapter 3, I want to read the first 16 verses and just uh, pull a few thoughts out of here. We decided not to have a sermon today just to give Faith Mission Home a bit more time. So, um, Acts chapter 3, beginning
beginning in verse 1. Now Peter and John went up together into the temple at the hour of prayer, being the ninth hour, and a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of them that entered into the temple. Who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked an alms. And Peter, fastening his eyes upon him with John, said, Look on us. And he gave heed unto them, expecting to receive something of them. Then Peter said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I thee. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and lifted him up, and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength. And he, leaping up, stood and walked, and entered with them into the temple, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. And they knew that it was he which sat for alms at the beautiful gate of the temple. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at that which had happened unto him. And as the lame man which was healed held Peter and John, all the people ran together unto them in the porch that is called Solomon's, greatly wondering or amazed. And when Peter saw it, he answered unto the people, Ye men of Israel, why marvel ye at this, or why look ye so earnestly on us, as though by our own power or holiness we had made this man to walk? The God of Abraham, and of Isaac, and of Jacob, the God of our fathers, hath glorified his son Jesus, whom ye delivered up, and denied him in the presence of Pilate when he was determined to let him go. But ye denied the Holy One and the just, and desired a murderer to be granted unto you and killed the prince of life, whom God hath raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. And his name, through faith in his name, hath made this man strong, whom ye see and know. Yea, the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness in the presence of you all. And Peter went on preaching and presented the gospel to them. I just want to look at a couple of the key figures in this uh, story and just pull some uh, thoughts for us. Let's look at the lame man. He was in a pretty tough situation. Um, he was lame, couldn't walk, so he was carried every morning out to this certain gate at the temple. And his livelihood, I guess you could say, depended on the generosity of the religious people coming to worship there at the temple. So what, what is our response when we face something hard in life? And especially if it's something like this, it's a, a chronic situation, something that is, is long lasting, and it could, be, it could be a multitude of things. It could be a sickness, could be a, a relational issue that is just ongoing. Um, I remember quite a few years ago at the place where I worked, there was just a situation where there was just this constant pressure you know, it's not a situation that lasts two or three days, but it goes on for months. And sometimes it's longer. So how do we respond? Um, and I guess in looking at this, um, I'm not critical of, of the man. It seemed like he'd settled into a routine. He had accepted his lot in life. There's something to be said for that. Um, but I wonder, do we settle for less sometimes than what God may have in store for us? There's a fine line, like I said, between being contented and maybe being open um, to what God would have more for us. It, so he was into this routine, carried every morning out to the gate and waiting there and just asking for handouts from people that were passing by. This was his normal, but God had a surprise waiting for him. God had something better. Um, you know, I wondered, where was this man when, when Jesus was out there healing? You know, did Jesus never pass him by? Or was, was God just saving this situation for later? Um, I, I don't know. But the, so that's the first thing I want us to just think about. If you're facing a situation in life, um, sometimes God brings something along that jars us out of our normal routine. And it's not very comfortable. Sometimes we're not quite sure what to do with it. But maybe we need to just hang on just a little bit and see what, what God wants to do with that. Sometimes it, it may have a better end than what we think. Let's look at Peter and John. 
they went to the temple to pray. It was a, probably a normal routine as a Jew for them. But in the middle of that, they faced a need. What's your response when you're going about life and you see a need? Especially something like this. <clears throat> we see somebody paralyzed. Uh, we probably feel like, well, there's not a whole lot I can do about that. Or maybe there's other situations in life that we come up to. You ever felt inadequate when you faced a need? Come right face to face to it and it's like, what am I supposed to do about this, God? It uh, feels like I should do something, but I'm not adequate. I'm not, I, can't, I can't fix this situation. And maybe too often we just kind of fade back and hope that the person beside us is going to do something, right? <laughs> it's a little more comfortable, and then we'll, we'll support them in what they, what they uh, try. But you know what? I just want to challenge you this morning to, to just step up and care. Sometimes we can't fix the situation. You know, when, when Jesus was preaching to the huge crowd and people started fainting, they needed food. And there was no food available but one young boy's lunch. That was not adequate, not even close. But he offered it, and God blessed it. He was willing to give what he had. So don't forget that. If you feel like you're facing a need, sometimes it's just little things. You know, um, just a little bit of an encouragement. I have, a, I have a young brother, Christian brother, that I can depend on him to... Several times during the week, he will, he will send me a text and say, what is something specific I can pray for you today? That's not a big thing, is it? But for me, it is. When I'm on the receiving end, that's big. And so maybe it's just a hug. Somebody you meet, um, you can tell that they need something. Sometimes we tell people, well, I'll be praying for you. Um, and I've been learning that sometimes, often, it's good to just pray for them right there. Whether you're on the phone or whether you're in person, um, we can pray for them later on too. But it's easy to say, I'll be praying for you, and we walk away. Just pray for them right there. So it's not, it's not always that we can fix the whole situation or that maybe we feel adequate for it. But we need to remember what Jesus said, freely you have received, freely give. <clears throat> if we've known... If we do know and have experienced Jesus, we have something to offer, whether we can fix the people's situation or not. And I like how Peter created a thirst, uh, an, an interest. He, he stopped when he noticed this man. Well, the man had asked for alms. And then, then Peter, there in, in verse 4, he says he stopped there. Well, didn't say he stopped, but he said, look on us. And I'm, I'm wondering what went through the lame man's mind. I'm guessing... He thought, oh, this is, going to be, this is going to be good. This is one of those um, proud religious people that blow the trumpet and then they make sure people are watching and they give me some gold coins. This is going to be good. Well, then Peter says, silver and gold have I none. Now he was probably, well, pff, now what? But he gave him something way beyond what he had expected. So maybe we need to take a cue in this. As we see needs in people's lives, maybe we can stir up a hunger um, and, then, and then meet the need to whatever level that we can and then, and then lead them on to God. Um, that is, that is the, the need, the bottom line need of everyone that we meet anyhow. So I like how Peter, Peter handled that. I'm sure it was under the direction of the Spirit. Now when we, <clears throat> looking a little bit at the, the bottom line, what resulted of this whole thing? Yes, the man was healed. His life was changed, but I like the fact that God was lifted up. He was praised. He was glorified, and Peter took the chance then to preach the gospel. If, we would, if I'd have read through the rest of the chapter, um, we would have found out that he, um, he also preached the gospel to the crowd that was there. So that's the bottom line, is glory for God and the preaching of the gospel So just a little recap, if you're the one that is in need, if God stirs your boat just a little bit or rocks your boat, um, just hang on. Maybe there's something good going to come out of it, maybe something better than what it looks like at the start. Um, and if we be in need, 
we see someone with a need, let's not be afraid to offer what we do have. Um, it's probably not, we probably won't have the dramatic results or often it's not as dramatic. And yet, when you're the one on the receiving end, it's, it's bigger to you than the one who is doing the giving because you're the one with the need. And, and so it means a lot when someone cares. And then let's make sure that God gets the glory in the end. That's all that I have for the devotional. I think at this point we will, um, I will start in with the announcements. And if the ushers are ready to pass the offering baskets, um, that would help us save a little bit of time <clears throat> to do that. So for the home people, for the last two Sundays, or for today and last Sunday, put your, um, both of the offerings in for that. And later we will lift an offering for the Faith Mission Home. There's no service here tonight. Uh, Wednesday evening will be regular service. The time uh, for proving membership for Wayne and Mary Ellen um, is up, so we want to move ahead with uh, taking them in as members. And so, Wayne, I did not have a chance to contact you, but will you be here next Sunday, as far as you know? Okay, so next Sunday, if you would be you and your wife would be ready to share your testimony, and we will have ballots ready to pass out for you as members, and then you can fill those out and return those, and hopefully the council is favorable, maybe take you in the following Sunday then. Diane Zimmerman has applied for membership also, so if you get a chance, uh, extend a welcome to her and get to, get to know her over the next six to eight months. <clears throat> Okay, we'll need a couple volunteers from the ladies to contact our young sisters who are in service. Who would like to contact Allison this week? Thank you. And someone to contact Megan. There you go. Thank you, and don't forget to pray for them. <clears throat> Just a reminder, the viewing and funeral details for David Sutton, Jared's father. Um, and correct me, Calvin, if this is wrong, but the viewing is today from 12 to 3, and then the funeral begins at 3. And that is at the Moeller Funeral Home in Valparaiso. So it's, a, it's quite a drive from here, but you do have the time change that's in your favor heading out there. And then the burial will be Monday at noon. Is that correct? Yes. And is that also at, um, where will that be taking place? Forget the name of the... Uh, uh, Angel Crest Cemetery is to be right at the cemetery. Okay. So if you need the uh, information for how to get there, if you'd like to go check with Brother Calvin. I think that is all the announcements that I have. Check your bulletins for, for other current announcements there. Is there any other announcement from the congregation? Okay, if not, um, we will open it up for just a short um, sharing time. And um, maybe right at the start, this is our daughter Courtney's last Sunday here um, before she heads to Belize on Thursday morning. So, um, Courtney and family, if you want to come up here, and Brother Calvin, if we'd have a prayer for her before she goes. <clears throat>
All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, it is uh, hard to see someone leave. Lord, I have often thought of um, Barnabas and Saul when you sent them out too. <clears throat> so it seems like that is part of your plan to send those who love you to reach out to those who do not know you. And we just want to align ourselves with your plan. <clears throat> uh, and this with Courtney um, this week. Thank you for her, Lord. Thank you for her, her commitment to you, her relationship with you. Thank you for the way that she has blessed the congregation here. Now, as she goes, Father, we ask you to go ahead of her. We pray that you would make her traveling go well, bless her health, Lord. Uh, and would you prepare, Lord, the encounters, the conversations, the, the interactions ahead of her, Lord. People need you. People need friendship. People need a listening ear. And I pray that she could be that person that is so filled with your Holy Spirit that she would have the strength, the love, Lord, the, the wisdom, the courage to minister. Lord Jesus said, I did not come to be ministered unto, but to minister. That was his mission. And I pray for Courtney that she would be, she would find it enriching, that she would find it fulfilling to, to enter into your mission for her over these next two years. Protect her from Satan, Lord, who loves to mess Christians up, who loves to uh, get us uh, to think in a carnal way, to sin in our hearts, and to get to lose our connection with you and lose our effectiveness as a Christian. Father, protect her from Satan's devices and empower her, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. And I pray that you are blessing upon the entire staff and the, the overall vision and work of the mission there, that it would be a, a tremendous light, light and salt, Lord, to where you have called them. And would you just bless the family, the empty place that is left behind? Would you fill in those needs in other ways as you are so able to do? We commit Courtney into your care in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Calvin. I guess it's like I told several different people. I said, I'm glad she's going, but it also makes me sad. Um, she will leave a big hole there in our home. Um, but we're glad that she can do that. <clears throat> okay, is there anybody else? Just for a couple minutes here, we're not going to wait long, but if you have a prayer request or um, anything, yeah, just raise your hand. <clears throat> morning. I don't want to go into details uh, because I don't want to take somebody else's blessing, but I hired a man in our church to do a job for me. I thought it was a small job. It turned out to be a lot bigger than I had planned, and I was thinking I might have to take out a second mortgage. Um, but in the course of that, our neighbor saw him there and asked him to do some work even though they weren't prepared to do that work yet till next year, they hadn't saved up for it. And then when I got the invoice, I was not charged near what the job should have cost. And so he just said, I want to bless you. And that allowed me to bless my neighbor. And I just went from there and they were just so grateful. But I want to praise the Lord for brothers and sisters who care about each other and love each other enough to do that kind of thing. And thank you for sharing. <clears throat> Anyone else? <clears throat> okay. If not, um, did I overlook anyone? 
don't think so. All right. Thank you again for coming. At this time, we will turn the, uh, turn the time over to Faith Mission Home and whatever your program consists of. <clears throat> To you all, it is definitely our privilege to be here with you this morning. Thank you for your hospitality so far. You have been blessed us. Um, we are from Faith Mission Home in Free Union, Virginia. Faith Mission Home is a residential care and training facility for special need children and adults. And we have staff that come from a lot of different places. And as we were traveling across your flatlands last evening, a number of them were uh, commenting about how nice it is to see the horizons wide and long. We're tucked right into the hollow, the hollows there um, in the shadows of Shenandoah National Park. So we are um, excited this morning to share with you a message about our great, big, wonderful God, the one who uh, Peter and John were testifying about and were preaching about. And um, we are going to be also sharing some about the joy that we find in living for Jesus and for his purposes. And then also reflecting on the fact that the best is yet to come as we anticipate the glory that awaits the redeemed in Christ Jesus. Um, you will notice this morning, you will likely notice that the program is maybe not as polished as some that you may have listened to already and worshipped with already, but I trust that as each one uh, steps in and fills their role and shares their part within the ability that they have, that you'll be challenged to bring your two loaves and your two fishes or whatever it is to Christ and allow him to use it as he gives you opportunity. So uh, we invite you to worship with us. We're going to have the, just a, you'll see in your programs for the order, we have the first standing here, and then if we could have a congregational song during the intermission, then we'll get up for the second part with the staff and the students, followed by the staff songs, after which Hosea Troyer, our director, will be um, talking, taking some time to tell you more about Faith Mission.
He will never, never leave us. He's always standing by to pick us up when we stumble. Where the apple of his eye. He's called the got the wind and the rain in his hands he got the wind and the rain in his hands he got the wind and the rain in his hands he got the whole world in his hands This is the zip and fog the leap. These of they the turtle my queen. For all the day my turtle my queen. For all the day my God creep those. These of all the day my give the thanks.
This next song is the Butterfly Song. It's one of our favorites. And um, it just reminds us that no matter who we are, what our abilities are, that we are special and we have something to offer. I am so glad that I found have loving the loving the book he has given. Wonderful things in the Bible I see. This is the dearest that Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. I am so glad that Jesus loves even me. The love of Jesus is so wonderful. The love of Jesus is so wonderful. The love of Jesus is so wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Oh, so hard. Can't get over it. So deep. Can't get under it. So wide. Can't get around it. Oh, wonderful love. Me, me, me. Jesus loves little ones like me, me, me. Little ones like me, sat up on his knee. Jesus loves little ones like me, me, me. Jesus loves little ones like you, you, you. Jesus loves little ones like you, you. Little 
ones like you who saved them through and through. Jesus loves little ones like you, you, you. Your turn now, okay? You sing a song yet? Huh? Do you love me? Huh? My turn now. Apple red happiness, part orange chip on it. Yeah, man, thing it don't say. Pepper man, energy gone drop. How about when kid cried your life? Huh? Up in a bit of. Super satisfying. Oh, anything loves on nothing is dry than you. Yeah, you get help a red happiness popcorn trip when I hear a man sing it in the Pepper man energy gone drop all day. When you get what you like. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Life. <laughs> He loved me.
Let's sing number 153 in your hymns of the church. Number 153. Those of you in the congregation that haven't stood yet this morning, could you stand for this song? You all can stand if you want to, but you don't have to. 153. The love of God. The love of God is greater far than tongue or man can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to the lowest hell. The guilty pair mowed down with care, God gave his son. Thank you. 
For those of you who would find it interesting, we'll do introductions at this point. My name is Jonathan Martin, and I am the assistant administrator at Faith Mission Home. I have most of my family with me this morning. Go ahead and stand. My wife, Lavana, and our four youngest children, our oldest son, is at home. Thank you. And then Jose and Bernice Troyer, is our, he's our director, and his son Elijah and Donnie Dyke, whose, parent, whose parents are house parents at the Oak Ridge Cottage. Thank you. And then I'll let the staff. And also we have with us our bus driver, um, Vernon Weaver. I'm not sure if he's here this morning or not. We are grateful for his, there he is, yes, uh, over on the men's side. We are grateful for his contribution. This is his 14th trip taking us on program trip. Hi, I'm Tanya Yoder from Montezuma, Georgia. I am bee mom at the home. I have Katrina Bontrager with me. She is one of my girls. She loves yellow and popcorn and does a good job helping out with dishes at the home. I'm Leah Troyer from Free Union, Virginia, and I am the domestic supervisor at the home. My name is Lydia Troyer. I am from Free Union, Virginia, and I am craft teacher at the home. With me is Nicole Contos. She is a very affectionate and energetic 36-year-old. A few of the things Nicole loves are her red Bible. She loves to sing and to talk, and she loves rollerblading in the halls at Faith Mission. My name is Krista Summers, and I am from Hidden Night, North Carolina. I am first mixer at the bakery. With me, I have Lucy Eckert. She is a 21-year-old girl from Taiwan. She is very artistic and loves to draw and is a tremendous help down at the bake shop. I am Kayla Spiker from Middleburg, Pennsylvania, and I am the cottage supervisor. With me, I have Ruthie Shirk. She lives at the bake shop and helps out there. Um, something she likes is helping with the bread and making connections. I'm Alicia Hosteller from Moxville, North Carolina. I am the cook at the bake shop. This is Rosalie Weaver. She lives at Rose Lane Cottage and um, she enjoys helping me cook in the kitchen, setting the tables and putting out food. Um, and she also enjoys ladybugs. I am Mabel Wise from New York, New York. I'm the middle school teacher up at the home. With me, I have Sandra Hosseller. She, she is a very friendly person, and when you meet her, she doesn't forget you for a long time. I'm Brandon Eby. I'm from Hagerstown, Maryland. Um, I work at the Pine Ridge Cottage. Um, I have Jason Miller with me. Um, he wasn't feeling well, so he decided to sit out for this program. I am Brenda Yoder from Holmes County, Ohio. I am currently the D-mom at the home, and this morning with me I have Jen Brennan. She is a very energetic 36-year-old. She lives at Rose Lane Cottage and works at the bake shop. She helps make cookies and does a lot of dishes. And she's friendly to everybody, and I don't think she meets any strangers. I'm Gina Yoder from Montezuma, Georgia, and I'm the E-mom at the home. With me today, I have Rayanne Schultz. She's one of my girls at the home, and she loves helping people, and loves helping people out. And she loves playing Uno, and every once in a while, she'll let you win. And she also loves eating Oreos. I'm Frida Yoder from Rose Hill, Virginia, and I'm second cook at the home. And with me, I have Elizabeth Folk. She lives at the Redbed Cottage. She helps out at the bake shop, and she loves listening to music, and she really loves bugs. I'm Cohen Martin. I am from Shinston, West Virginia. I am the D-Dad at the home, and with me I have Joel and Mast. Hey, he man. is one of my boys. He, loves he is a very friendly guy. Um, he, some of his favorite things are pizza and applesauce and his books. I'm Wes Snisley from Hutchinson, Kansas. Um, I am the the E dad at the main home. With me is Jeff Beaver. He is from he lives at Oak Ridge Cottage, and he 
enjoys his chicken chores at the Pine Ridge Barn, um, feeding the chickens and, and gathering the eggs and pack packaging the eggs in the flats. And he also enjoys his um, taking his dog on walks in the afternoon. Here on the trip, he's been doing a lot of um, word searches in his word search book. My name is Joshua Schwarzenschuber, and I am from Virginia Beach, Virginia. I am the B-Boys child care worker at the home. And with me, I have Marcus Sensenig. Um, some interesting things about Marky, he loves to sing. He doesn't care for doing it in front of a mic, but he loves to sing and knows most any song. Um, another interesting thing about him is no matter where he goes, he will always find something to pick up and hold in his hand. So we arrived at the church last evening, and out of the church parking lot, he picked up a stone. And I let him carry that stone. He slept with that stone, and I made him deposit before we came in this morning. <laughs> I'm Chadwin Miller. I'm from Oswego, Kansas, and I teach a school at the home. With me, I have Jeff Lockevera. He is a very schedule-oriented person and um, has most events memorized, checks the schedule very regularly. He also loves chime clocks and catalogs. I'm Dylan Rosenberry from Greencastle, Pennsylvania. I am the C-Boys child care worker at the home. With me is Micah Yoder. He works in the cottage program at Faith Mission, which involves uh, working at the cutting board shop, and he helps a lot with the sanding of that. Um, and he also enjoys some sports like basketball and volleyball.
grateful attitude in our daily lives. And that is something that um, the students have taught me a lot about and are still teaching me. Um, it does not take much to make them grateful and happy. And I think we as God's people have been blessed with so much. And I think it's important that we don't take, take that for granted, but live our daily life with gratitude and joy. J-O-Y. Huh? J-O-Y. 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 My Jesus first, and it's up loud, and other than Hosea. J-O-Y. 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 My feet. Jesus first, and it's up loud, and other than me. Lots of joy in living if we face life with a smile. Take time to do some kindness and go to the second mile. For the greatest joy is giving, and it will all come back to you when you add a little sunshine to all I'm saying do. Before the day is ended, try to do some worthwhile thing, help to ease another's burden, and make a sad heart sing. You will find each new tomorrow will be happy from the start if you only will remember. Keep it small within your heart.
saying we're about heaven and heaven has never meant so much to me as it does now since I started working with the students and seeing how a lot of these are just caught in their bodies they're handicapped and as I think about heaven and what a joy it will be to see each one of these running and playing like never before I saw a blind man tapping along, losing his way as he passed through the door. Tears fill my eyes as the friend you can see, with a smile on his face, he replied to me, I'll see all my friends in my
right, so our saxophones for singing this morning, um, a lot of them carry a similar message. Uh, they talk a lot about God's leading, and they talk a lot about heaven. And uh, when I think of God's leading, uh, it seems like a lot of times, uh, it seems like we can't see it uh, very clearly. Uh, we see uh, some of it, but I feel like we only get a dim picture of uh, where we're headed and uh, where God is taking us. Um, our first song uh, carries that message pretty well. It talks about the molded clay that blinds our eyes. We can only see so much of God in our humanness. But then it also sings of a time when that trumpet will sound and that molded clay will come off and it says, we'll know it last as we are known. And no, at last, 
John saw a city that could not be hid. John saw the city. Oh, yes, he did. John caught a glimpse of the golden throne. Tell me all about it. Go right on around the throne. He saw the crystal sea. There's got to be more. What will it be? True.
you would open your and you would zoom in on the state of Virginia and then you would pick a spot close to the center of the state just to the east of the Blue Ridge Mountains about two hours drive south of Washington DC and you would zoom in further you would eventually get to the place that we call Faith Mission Home. We refer to it as a campus. Um, it's situated in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains and it's on about 250 acres of land, very hilly. There's hardly a flat spot on it. Lots of trees, uh, a lot of nature around us. And in the center of campus, there is a large stone building that is pretty much the hub of what happens there. There are about 35 students that live there full time, and then there are 50 single staff that also live and work there on campus. And then there are 12 families also that live there and are a part of the mission. Also on the campus, you would find a church house, a school. There's um, 12 households. There's a bakery there. We have a farm. There's a mechanic shop, two woodworking shops and staff houses. Um, little Village is really what it is there in the foothills of Virginia. If you would be able to see the details of what are happening there on any given day, there are a lot of, there's a lot happening. Faith Mission Home is a training facility, so we have school there. Um, I didn't, didn't actually mention the cottages. There are six cottages also on campus that are there for the higher functioning students. About 35 of the students live at the main facility and approximately 20 live in cottages that are within a short walk from the main facility. Um, training, there are meal times, there are uh, lots of activities like going on walks and exercising. There are um, times during the day when all of the students um, take care of their hygiene, showers. There is um, devotions that they have. And so a lot is happening there at Faith Mission Home. This all started about 60 years ago, when a young man by the name of Sanford Yoder, who lived there in Shiflet Hollow, he found out about this property that was for sale. It was nine acres, a large stone building, and a few other buildings, and it was for sale, put there by the Episcopal Church. It had been a a uh, preventorium, which is some kind of something like a hospital, that had been a, a ministry to the local hill folks there. There was medical care was not. Um, they had to go pretty far for it, and uh, it just wasn't really much of an option. So the Episcopal Church put this mission there, and um, they served the local people, and it was also an attempt at evangelizing them. Well, when the park moved in, Shenandoah National Park, the people had to leave. And um, also in conjunction with that, some of the sicknesses like tuberculosis and other things um, had become less of an issue and the need for the hospital went away. So they put it up for sale. And Sanford, who lived just down the road, had this idea that maybe it could be something like a voluntary service unit. Um, so it was taken to the mission boards and 
the decision was made to purchase it, and in 1965, the doors opened, and um, it became a facility that trains and cares for people with mental disabilities. That is what we are doing today, basically the same thing. Um, I wonder sometimes what, what really did Sanford have in mind uh, when he made this proposal to the board? Uh, was he thinking that this is something that would be a blessing to people with mental disabilities? Was that the driving thing that was behind his idea? Or was he thinking about what it would do for our people to have a place for young people and families to come and serve? I'm not sure. I think I met Sanford one time, but um, I, I didn't ask him. But he had something in mind, and I guess it really doesn't matter that much, but what I see today is that this is a ministry that addresses both of those things. Um, sometimes I wonder which one is the greater ministry, what it does for the students that come there or what it does for the people that serve there. I see it very much as a something that reciprocates. Um, I actually think it reminds me a little bit of these, uh, we've heard of uh, these ministries that are trying to evangelize people in countries where the gospel is not wanted by the government. And so we have people that are going there and they are, they're going there, um, and maybe they're teaching English, but the real goal is to uh, bring the gospel to the people. And so I sometimes wonder if God, in his wisdom, looked at this, and he had this idea for Faith Mission Home to be there. And while most of the time we look at it as a ministry, uh, an opportunity to serve people, with mental disabilities, I think God may have been understanding that this is actually uh, almost more about what it does to develop people that serve. Um, I see that so clearly as having been there for a while uh, and, and watching people develop as they serve. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing that happens. I just love to see young people coming and being stretched quite a bit. Um, it's not unusual to see young people in tears because they don't know what to do next. Um, it is a very challenging work there. And through that, they grow and they are stretched. Um, I, I was recently pretty inspired by the thought that God is a gardener. Um, it, in Genesis, it talks about God. There in Genesis chapter 2, verse 8, it says, God planted a garden eastward in Eden. I don't know exactly, you know, most of, most of what God what God created, he, he spoke and it came into being. But here it gives the idea that God, I think he got down on his knees and he, he planted something. There were seeds there that God planted. And, of course, out of that, something grew. And I think the next verse it says that it brought forth trees and then there was fruit but alongside that, God also formed man out of the dust of the ground. So he planted a garden, but then he also created man out of that same soil that he planted those seeds that brought forth trees and fruit. We were made as 
man, humans. And then I also think about the fact that we are, well, there, there's seed that is sown. Um, in the book of Mark, it talks about the, the word of God being the seed. And we have the ability to, to grow things out of our lives, the, the seed that is grown. And I see, I'm, I'm inspired when I see how our churches are serving um, this prayer that happened today for the young lady that's going to Belize. Um, that there were seeds that were planted sometime. I think there were parents, there were Sunday school teachers, teachers, um, preachers, a church, that the, there were seeds that were being planted that there's, there's now fruit that is coming. And that's a wonderful thing. And as we, as we allow God's word to shape us and to grow things in our life, there is, at some point, there's fruit there. And I guess that's a challenge I'd like to just throw out to all of us today, um, to look at our lives and to cultivate those things that will grow and eventually bear fruit in our life. Um, along, it seems like that theme of, of bearing fruit and uh, being a blessing to others is you can find it as you go throughout the Old and the New Testament. Um, I love the first Psalm where it talks about a righteous man. He shall be like a tree and he will bring forth his fruit in his season. Um, and so, yeah, I love to, uh, one thing I really enjoyed on this trip is visiting with our hosts and hearing their stories. And yeah, there's, you can, you can see fruit in, in the lives of, of the people. Um, it's something that we should really think about and cultivate and be concerned about. Um, I think that, you know, I see it in our staff that come, but um, you don't have to be in VS to bear fruit. I think, I think you can be a fruit-bearing Christian. I, I think being in business is a good way to bear fruit. Um, or being a, a cashier at a bulk food store, a mom, a dad. Um, yeah, we have so many opportunities to bear fruit. And I, I, I like to think of our students also as fruit-bearing people. Um, and I, I some, you know, God's ways are so much higher than our ways. And I wonder if once the scales come off of our eyes and, and we see things clearly for exactly what they are, I think we will understand better that our students serve us. Um, God has allowed people with mental disabilities to make us better people. And so I think there is fruit bearing happening in the lives of our students in ways that we don't even really think about or understand. Um, so I guess that's a challenge I just want to put out for you all is to be willing to do the best you can as you saw our students doing today um, and allow God to use you in whatever way that this whatever situation you're in um, there's there's so much that we can do I'm going to ask four of our staff to come up here and maybe explain a little a little bit about a specific aspect of what they experience at um, at Faith Mission Home. So um, you know who you are. Why don't you come on up? And uh, I will. I'll give them. A, I'll just put a little disclaimer out. They have not had very much time to think about that. Uh, about their what I'm going to ask them. I think that's kind of good for them. You know, it cleans their arteries out a little bit, and uh, the answers are a little more spontaneous. 
uh, but they did have a little heads up. I'm actually just making an excuse for myself because I didn't get around to uh, letting them know about this. But um, yeah, we have um, Alicia here. She she works at the bake shop, and she's going to tell us some things about the bakery there on campus. And uh, then Josh, Josh Schwarzentruber, um, he is a child care worker. And um, Josh is going to tell us a little bit about what life is like as a child care worker. And then Wes from Kansas here, he's going to just tell us how it came about that he decided to come to Faith Mission Home. And uh, my daughter Leah here, she's going to talk to you about staff life. What does that mean? Um, so um, Alicia, I'm going to give you the mic. And uh, why don't you tell us um, how many days of the week that you bake there at the bakery and um, how many girls work there? And then I have a few other questions for you. All right, we bake four days a week, um, Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And there are eight staff girls and eight student girls. So um, what kind of products do you bake? We bake yeast breads um, and sweet breads like banana and pumpkin. Um, those are very popular. We also do cinnamon rolls and brownies and granola. They help a lot with washing dishes and um, icing cupcakes. I mean, that's another thing we do. We do cupcakes and cakes. Um, they help with small jobs like that and just cleaning up and um, helping our, our days um, bright. Um, yeah, they make our days brighter just being there with us. Um, it varies anywhere between 4 and 4.45. Anything more you want to say about the bake shop? Um, it's a great place to be. Um, you, yeah, as a staff, we, um, yeah, we have respon responsibilities with the students and also running a business. So that can cause some challenges, but it also is a really good work. Where is the product sold? Um, in various stores within about an hour or two from, um, from the big shop. Yeah, the bake shop is, is a tremendous blessing to Faith Mission Home. It gives um, our, our cottage student girls a place, their, their life revolves around the cottage. Um, it gives them fulfillment and uh, they do help out with some some things and um, it's just a really I enjoy going there it's a happy place busy um, and of course there's cookies there and uh, just I think it was last year on my birthday birthdays are a big deal with the cottage girls they will remind you a couple weeks ahead of time if your birthday's coming up and so um, I stopped in there, happened to be on my birthday, and they met me at the door and sang happy birthday for me. And that was just a really nice experience. Um, so I enjoy going to the, to the bake shop and uh, just seeing what's going on there. Uh, they really crank out a lot of baked goods. And the funds that are generated there at the bakery uh, go back into the program and help to keep our tuition costs down. So it's really, a, it really has been a really good thing for Faith Mission Home and really appreciate all the hard work that happens there. Um, so let's see, why don't, uh, Josh, why don't you tell us about uh, what it means to be a CCW. Some of you heard heard people up here when they were introducing themselves they were saying uh, I am the I'm the the B dad or the a mom tell us about that and what that all means 
All right, so before I explain a little bit what my day looks like and uh, what all the different terms mean that you may have heard as we're introducing ourselves, uh, what does it consist or what does it mean to be a CCW or child care worker? Uh, when you think of faith mission, I don't know what you think of. Uh, you may think of taking care of students who can't talk to you. Uh, they may seem like just this living person that you can't even do anything with except take care of their physical needs. Um, wiping snotty noses, sometimes cleaning up messed pants, throw up. I don't know what all sorts of stuff comes to your mind. Um, and yes, that is true. That does happen. That is part of being a dad or a mom. Um, but that is not all it is. That's not even close to what it is. Uh, a CCW's life is quite rewarding, and I thoroughly enjoy it. Um, having the opportunity and the privilege to take care of a group of children that some of them can do, they have different abilities, but some of them just can't do a whole lot for themselves physically. They may be able to do jobs, but they may not be able to take care of some of their physical needs. And the opportunity and privilege that we have to meet those needs and take care of them on a day-to-day -day basis and love them, get them excited about the things that they do, as minor as folding a napkin, taking a napkin from your hand, setting it beside a plate, um, getting them excited about that and seeing them thoroughly enjoy what they're doing is just fantastic. Um, so when you think of Faith Mission, it's not all nasty. There is great rewards to it and um, thoroughly enjoy it. So the way the program works up at the home, there are five groups of girls and five groups of guys. And for the guys and the girls, they're lettered A through E. So I am the B dad. And sort of what my day looks like, so there's different classes to go throughout the day. There's A school, B school, and C school. And you go there, determine on your mental ability or physical ability, A being the highest, C being the lowest. Um, and there is a home ec classroom, a craft classroom, and a new barn classroom that was just added to the schedule. And then, like I said before, the individual classes, there's also speech and motor skills. I think I got all of them. Anyhow, so what my day looks like is we have breakfast in the morning, sit with my boys, and then we go back into boys' end, have devotions, back there for a little while, come out, and some of my boys go through to the individual classes throughout the day. Um, and we wipe some tables, sweep the floor, get the dining room all cleaned up, put all the song books away from devotions. Then we go on a walk. Sometimes we go down to the guy's staff and wash the dishes down there. That's the bee dad's responsibility. And the other day, there were hardly any dishes to wash, so we sat down and had a big chip party. My boys love eating chips, so we just sat there and ate chips. And then at juice break is at 10 o'clock, time for a little break, normally unless the students are acting up, and eat a little snack. After that, we go down to the barn class, do various things down there. Sometimes it's sitting there and chatting and petting the animals, emptying water, feeding, grabbing some hay, taking a pony cart ride every once in a while. And then after that is home ec class, and we grade all the cheese for salads, and sometimes we have, uh, most every single Saturday night is pizza night, and we grade all the cheese for the pizzas, and uh, my boys help with that, grade cheese, fold napkins. Um, lunch, after lunch, there's a break time. Uh, the boys go back, take naps, brush their teeth, and then at 1.15, we come out and sweep and mop the kitchen and mop the dining room and then put all the tables back in place, all the bins, flower bins and stuff back in place. And then we go and we take the slop from the home, the slop from the bake shop, and also the trash from the home and the trash from the bake shop, go down to one of the cottages at the farm, give all the slop to the pigs, and then we go up to the master shop and dump all the trash into a bin, wash the bins out. Uh, wash the trash cans out, and then deliver them back to the bake shop and back to the home. And we have shower time, craft class, just work on putting on beads, stuff like that. 
And then there's a little package shed just below the church as you come up the lane where most of the packages are supposed to be delivered. And we get in our truck and we go grab all those packages and deliver them around campus. It's a terrible fun time. We sit there, my boys love loud music. And so we blare our music and toot our horn and deliver packages. And then after that, we do ice and water at the home. And that's what our day looks like. That was a pretty rosy picture, Josh. <laughs> Imagine, I, I think I'd want to be one of your boys. Chip break, chip party, uh, juice break before 10 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, that That's uh, actually, you got the picture that it's very structured and um, most days are very similar as they go throughout the day and you know we do well with that uh, with structure and especially our students need that structure and that's something that is provided there at Faith Mission Home. Josh does an excellent job as a as a dad as a child care worker. Okay so uh, my daughter Leah she is the domestic supervisor there and uh, what that means is she's responsible for the students clothing, um, getting them ordered, making sure they uh, get uh, repaired if needed, and then also um, she works with the floaters that come and gives them their jobs, um, keeping the place tidy and, and cleaned up. Um, and she's going to talk to us about staff life. Our students go to get up very early in the morning, then they go to bed um, early in the evening as well. So uh, there's a lot of uh, staff activities that happen in the evening. So she's going to tell us about that. So like he said, the students get up early in the morning and go to bed early in the evening. So that's basically when our staff shift is from approximately 6 to 6. Um, and during that time, we're focused on teaching the students, training them, taking care of them, meeting their needs. Um, and there is interaction with the other staff. There's lots of interaction. But um, after you get off of duty in the evening, that's when the um, real connecting with the other staff starts. We have a lot of activities that are planned for our week. Um, we have volleyball nights and um, Bible study nights things like that. Um, there's also three staff dorms um, at the main home and then the cottages as well. And we love hanging out in there. Um, we get to know each other pretty well. So it's always, it's almost like a big happy family around there. So we get into all kinds of things together. Um, some of the random things that we do um, when there is nothing planned otherwise, we love to take a tub of ice cream, go have a random ice cream party um, all over campus. We find all kinds of places to hang out. We also have a park um, on campus there that is great for campfires and disc golf, softball, spike ball, things like that. Um, yeah, we love to play foosball as well. That's kind of a faith mission thing. Tell us about the ice cream party. So I think this may have slowed down since COVID a little bit, but um, I think it still happens sometimes. So our ice cream parties, we'll get a tub of ice cream and a bunch of spoons and go find a great place. Uh, might be the graveyard, which sounds weird, but the stars are amazing up there. Um, and everybody just digs in, and the germ freaks use a, uh, use a bowl. <laughs> okay. Yeah, um, young people are very creative, and uh, most of the time it's good. Um, one thing that, uh, that happens when people come is they they don't know very many people that are working there. Most of the people, I think, that come. Um, Jody, 
Jody Yoder is here with us. She's, she was there not long ago. How many people did you know when you came to Faith Mission Home, approximately? Was it a handful? Or, yeah. So out of uh, 50 young people, she knew a handful. Uh, but by the time she left, as is the story with our staff, they get to know throughout the course of their um, time of serving there they get to know probably 65 70 young people very good and so that's a that's been a good thing okay uh, Wes tell us how it came about that you decided to come to faith mission home so I first heard of faith mission well I, I guess I'm not sure when I first heard of faith mission but I first I remember um, was when my cousin went there probably it's probably been nine ten years ago and she came back with all kinds of very interesting stories and pictures you know stories of fire drills in the middle of the night and and all kinds of things that that sound exciting um, and I was I was fairly young at the time but it was fairly impressionable and then Oh, probably five, six years ago, there were several more of my cousins that went and came back with with more stories, and which I was I was a little older then, and and was able to. Um, well, I, I was more on the more on the inside loop with some of those stories, and you know heard stories about. Well, you know, of course, the fire drills and the people, some of the students making funny noises and being obsessed with stealing coffee and things like that and so this was all sounded interesting and I I'd always wanted to to go to service um, somewhere um, but I wasn't I didn't have my mind made up for any particular place but this this kind of always this kind of kept kept coming up um, and then probably a couple years ago well at some point I was I was asked to um, to do service in another in another place and and I didn't feel I almost I almost did it um, but I didn't didn't quite feel right about it, and and so I didn't. And and anyway, here's a couple years ago, my another cousin, a second cousin, was there, and one night I was I was talking on the phone, and she was like, you know, you should you should come to Faith Mission, and I was like, well, I don't, I don't know. This is just this is just too too big and scary of a place with all these crazy people running around, and so she's like. Should I put your name in? Like I don't know, I I mean sure why not? I can always say no. So she put my name in and and um, here a while later I get an envelope in the mail and and so and then at that point I needed to decide whether I'm gonna actually pursue this or not um, and and eventually it came came about that I ended up going and and have been there for just over a year now and. It's it's been really good. It's it's not easy. There's there's days when there were especially at the, at the start there were days when I was like why why did I ever sign up for this? Um, but as you as you warm warm up to it, you you get to know the students better and you get to know what their what their sounds mean. What their um, they have they have certain sounds that to a new person they sound like a just a random sound that that you don't know what it, what it is but if as you get to know them those sounds mean mean something and and that's that's been a blessing to to get to know the students and yeah learn learn to appreciate them US yeah um, we do have a display in the back there encourage you to take a look at that there are applications there also if someone feels like you may be interested in serving uh, keep that in mind. We are we feel very blessed by the support of our uh, the conservative Anabaptist community um, with the staff that come. Um, not only the the amount of staff, but the quality of the staff that come and serve there. Um, we are taking care and training other people's children, so uh, we do need we do need people that um, are have a, a good a good basis in life and are there to serve and we are very 
very um, blessed as I look at the quality of the staff that come to serve there. Um, I know there would be plenty of other things that we could talk about. I'm going to briefly open it up. If there are questions that you have, we'll try to answer that, but time is moving. We have another uh, program this evening, and so uh, just briefly, is there, are there any questions that someone might have? Okay, I think the day off uh, thing maybe got missed. So every week, each one of our staff get a day off. That's a pretty big deal. Uh, it's a day for them to um, relax, go do fun things. Usually they're, an average day off group is um, six to eight people. And so they get one day off per week. Activities are any, anything from just going out for breakfast and having a very quiet day. Uh, you can have off to yourself if you request that. To a big day like uh, going to Washington, D.C. to tour or some other crazy things like going, driving three hours to Virginia Beach to watch the sunset um, over the ocean. Uh, sunrise, the sunrise. That uh, means getting up and being on the road by 3 o'clock in the morning or earlier. Um, so, yeah, days off. Anything else? Yes. Okay. So, night duty. Night duty comes on at 8 o'clock. Um, there are two girls that are on night duty and one fella. And so, yes, they're, they're monitored around the clock. And uh, night duty fella also does the laundry. And the girls are responsible for, uh, aside from monitoring the, the students, they also do cleaning and things like that. So, yeah, night duty does that. That's from 8 o'clock in the evening until 6 o'clock in the morning. Any more questions? Okay, thank you for your hospitality. We really appreciate that. It's been a good experience for us to come here into Napanee and um, see the people here. And thank you also for your support for the offering. Thank you. We'll turn the time over to the moderator. Thank you to each one for your part. Enjoyed the program very much. Last December, Alec and I flew to Virginia to buy my mother's old car and drive it home. <clears throat> that was a Friday. And on Saturday, we drove to Faith Mission. And I think I met Jonathan that day. And I told Alec that if we ever get too old to take care of you, maybe this is a place you could go. I wasn't sure what he would think about why we were stopping in at Faith Mission. And um, so when we got there, there was some young men. That the first thing that, that happened, we walked in the door, these young men came and said, hey, Alec, why don't you, we, we'll hang out with you and your dad has an interview. And, and Alec was at church today for the first time in about six weeks. He was sitting back there in the back bench and he said, I remember Joshua. Joshua was one of the ones that talked to Alec that day. So I just want to bless you for what you're doing. I think it's a wonderful work and it was so good to have you here today and hear firsthand the things that you're doing. Um, right now we just want to go ahead and lift an offering for Faith Mission if you would like to contribute. Um, this is your opportunity. <laughs> Just make a couple of comments here while we're lifting the offering. 
I want to say something to you students at Faith Mission. The ones of you that have the Faith Mission shirt on, I'm talking to you right now, okay? There is a, uh, a definition of success that a famous basketball coach said, John Wooden, if anybody's heard of John Wooden, he was a famous basketball coach back in the 1950s, and he said that success is, this was his definition of success, it is peace of mind which can be attained only through self-satisfaction and knowing that you did your best to become the best of what you are capable. That's a long definition, but he's basically saying if you did your best today, you are a success. So I want to tell you students, you are a success. Thank you for your part in the program today. It was very beautiful. And I want to say a word to you staff. Matthew 25, verse 40. And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Thank you for being the hands and feet of Jesus to people that have these kinds of disabilities. <clears throat> All right, I want to make a couple of announcements here. The, the uh, faith mission people need the upstairs. This is an announcement to the children, okay? Children, you're listening to me. The upstairs classrooms, our Sunday school classrooms upstairs, Faith Mission needs to use those classrooms to change clothes for the afternoon. So children and anyone, please just stay downstairs. Don't go upstairs. Leave those classrooms free for, the, for our Faith Mission friends here to, to use to change uh, before lunch. Again, we're having a lunch today. All of you are invited to stay for that meal. And we're going to offer a prayer for that in just a minute. Um, also, wanted to say this earlier when we had the prayer for Courtney, but those of you local church folks, make an opportunity, if you can, to just go and, and uh, say goodbye to her, give her a blessing before you leave today. Okay, is there anything I missed that, I sh that should be said right now? I think we should. Why don't we try to do that? So you guys, if you could, well, they do need to go change. Are you going to change first or eat first? Okay. Okay. So should we then, I guess people could go ahead and. Yeah. I guess when, when you're all are ready and come downstairs, let's make a break in the line to let these people, they do have a time schedule to get into the line and um, so they can get through as quickly as possible. Okay, let's stand for prayer. Lord, I thank you for the thought that came to me today, uh, that song, Hallelujah Square, and thinking about, and I think someone else mentioned it, about how all of these students that are here today from Faith Mission one day will sing and laugh and speak uh, clearly and um, one day in heaven. All of us, Lord, we all have our aches and pains and our problems and on the other side, Lord, how beautiful it will be. And, but in the meantime, while we are here, Lord, you give us the opportunity to, to actually grow as we serve people around us. So I'm asking your blessing on all the staff at Faith Mission, the mission that is being accomplished there. Lord, we thank you for that and pray for your blessing. Lord, Satan loves to mess things up. We pray that you would protect from any uh, division that Satan would want to bring about to hinder this mission. We pray for the joy and the care of each one of the students.
and just for the future of the program, Lord, of such a valuable service that is being offered in Jesus' name. We thank you so much for that. Praying your continued blessing on this work. Now, Lord, we thank you for the physical food that has been provided. We ask your blessing on the meal and upon our fellowship. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. You are dismissed. May God bless you.